I agree with you, Justin. I think marriage is an L, especially for men. I mean, you're Aww. an incredibly successful guy, yeah. and I think you previously stated, hey, look, oh, it, I didn't yeah. get to my position in life to marry someone and it be a liability where she could potentially uh, yeah, take change her mind. Shit yeah, and no, then, no fucking so way, I agree with you there, and especially, I mean, w with uh, stats as they are, I think it's something like 80% of marriages end in divorce, or sorry, excuse me, 50% of marriages end in divorce. 80% of those are initiated by, by women. So men are disproportionately impacted by the negative, well, there's almost, it's almost entirely negative outcomes of divorce. So um, I, I, and I, but Ch Chase, I know we've kind of had a back and forth on the, on the whole marriage thing. And I think kind of my point is that you could have a long-term even life partner with someone and not get married to them and I mean I think the two things I'd point to recently uh, granted this one isn't as strong of a case as I previously thought but you look at for example what happened with Steven Crowder now there's been some videos that came out mm -hmm. and that don't exactly paint him in the most flattering light but you know Steven it makes it easy to understand why his wife would leave yeah now granted it's a th it's a three minute clip of an otherwise multi year long marriage people have bad day bad days he doesn't look good granted he does not look good in that in that moment but you look at the the context of his marriage they were both virgins both religious um even they got divorced you have we have you, you're a... Yeah, but Brian, hold, hold, I gotta, I gotta on, say hold something on, hold on, on that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're ex-pastor. I imagine you were quite pious when you were a pastor. You were, uh, you got married, I assume, to a pious man. Were you, uh, when you got married, were you, were you both virgins? If, I don't know if that's too prying, but... No, we were not. But you were both deeply religious. Yes. And so I, I look at that and I look even at a deeply religious person where... You know, th there's uh, people who are agnostic or who are secular who get married, and I, you know, it, it would occur to me that people that are religious have even like a, at least logically, you would th you would think, well, there's the religious component to marriage, so those are potentially stronger. But you look at, I mean, and I looked at the the data. I think, the, I think religious people edge out secular people a little more in terms of staying together, but. It, it still ain't looking great, the even data, for people the, who are Brian, religious. Brian, the, yeah. data, the data on people who are actually attending church and they take the religion seriously, they don't just call themselves Christian, there, there's a big difference in those data sets versus mm -hmm. uh, the people that actually take it seriously, right? And, and to call her marriage pious or to call Crowder's marriage pious is not actually fair to people that are truly honoring what the Word of God tells us to do. For example, no offense, but female pastor, not, not living in alignment with the word of God, right? Paul was clear. We're not supposed to have female pastors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that, that's, not, that's not an example of piety. Stephen Crowder, right? The way that he was speaking to his wife, the, look, it's, it's one moment in time. It's three minutes. It's, yeah. you know, there's no way to extrapolate that out to the rest of their lives with certainty. But if those three minutes were a, mm -hmm. a representation of the rest of the way that he was approaching his marriage, it's mm -hmm. like... That's not how we're called to treat our wives when we're we're serious about our walk with Christ. You know, like he was speaking to her in a, a very aggressive and like, I don't know, man, like it, like she, she was just asking to like use the car and go get groceries and stuff. And the way he was speaking to her was so like condescending and rude and he was treating her like shit. You know what I mean? It's like I watched that clip and I'm like, I'm not surprised she wanted to leave him. Mm -hmm. if, if I was a woman and I had been with a guy like that for years and he had been treating me like that for years, I'd be like, yeah, I probably, you know, want to get out of this marriage. Right. It's like yeah. it's verbal abuse, you know, but there's a difference between that versus somebody who is actually striving to live by the tenets of the word of God and who is who, you know, who is loving their wife as he loves himself and who is sacrificing for her and her, who treats her like gently and with compassion. And if the wife is doing the same to her husband and she's, you know, submitting to her husband and she's loving him effectively and she follows his leadership and he is a good leader, you're going to have totally different marital outcomes with couples like that, right? Mm. Well, and it's really interesting because the when they do studies about sexual satisfaction for women, they find that women who are married in monogamous faithful marriages and they are going to church regularly, like weekly, share that they have the highest sexual satisfaction. And I super low divorce up. rates. That is so super made low up. Divorce rates. Super low There's divorce so much rates. data out there that women get more orgasms and more pleasure from women than they do to men. 
But that's because the man is pro- the, that man is probably not a good lover to them. That's yeah, what that's, that's about. the majority of the situation. But that's so because they're the, saying but the man needs to learn. To, see, that's the beauty of a lifelong marriage. It's like you learn to love each other, not just like in doing chores for each other, or doing fun things together, but in how you have sex, you learn to really love each other. Like, so but can you do if one partner? What do you do if one partner has a high libido and one partner has a low libido? Well, you work through that. You so one has together. to starve sexually and one no, you feels sac- guilty you for not sacrificing. Are you, are you speaking to involved. like, was that the case in your marriage? No, but I'm just, I just know examples where men like vo- either gender, one gender's like, I have no drive, so I, I can't. Well, if a I, guy, I'll, there, I'll answer that. If a guy has no drive and the woman has a high drive, he should go get his testosterone levels checked. <laughs> right? Because yeah. a guy, a guy I was who's, just gonna say, it's probably a guy a who's healthy, a guy who's right healthy, there. he's like, he's yeah. going to want sex, you yeah. know, but if he has no, if he has no sexual drive. Or he's super stressed out or he's not eating well, he's not sleeping. Even, or even yeah. vice versa like if a woman isn't having the same sex drive like that's i don't know i mean i think what it comes then, down to, then is there something wrong with the woman well, i think like, what it might comes not down be to as emotionally into the into, relationship yeah. if she's not ha- yeah. doesn't have that high sex drive because mm-hmm. when with my ex he had a really high sex drive and i don't i really don't care for sex but with him i was down to do it because you loved him every single day yeah, yeah however many times and that's the design of monogamous love and marriage is that you learn to love each other and this idea of like sexual incompatibility i think is a total myth i think it's a lie and people believe it and so they have sex before marriage but people have who have sex before marriage and sleep together or cohabitate actually have worse outcomes once married they're more likely to divorce not a lot of people know that that's what the social data says but that's because when you're in it for life and you're in it to really love this person be committed and learn them and do whatever you can for them you learn pleasure with them you learn how to love not just sex with them but your entire life with them and you work at it together i that's think cute. it's because when you're like monogamous like the when you're with someone longer like just them you learn to communicate like what you like and dislike in the bedroom like so your what pleasures do I, say if I, I like non-monogamy no, I'm saying like. You know what I mean? No, but like I'm saying like, like group when you're with. Yeah, it's like I love you and I want group sex. Well, I think if Let's you want that to, through. if you want to cheat on somebody and you're married to them, I think you make the decision not to. Yeah, and that's that's where I I have different beliefs from religion, which is about mm-hmm. sacrifice. I believe in honoring desires and like. Again, I not too. saying I, I, I think go I, out on a whim and just do whatever, but I think like I think that actually is true love. Can you love me in my fullness? And in my fullness, I'm not monogamous. In my fullness, I want to have sex with other people. In my fullness, I'm very sexual. If that's too much for you, I, I can't be with you. And I bless and release you. See, I think you're making an identity out of your desires, but your identity is you not just how you're, what you desire. You're making your identity out of your desires. Just because mine are sexual, you're making that about me, but you make an identity out of your desires for monogamy, for marriage, for so, procreation. That's your identity. I, I see we what all make our identities mm-hmm. around our desires. It's not just for sexually awake people. I think there's a lot of truth to what you're saying. The question is what desire? Will you be defined by your sexual impulse and urge, or will you be defined right. by something much bigger, a or transcendental like love? Or, or is your identity based on controlling your desire? I think, like, it's, mean, I think, I think it's that's about, actually harmful. It's about channeling it. It's about channeling it. That's what I do. I channel it to all the people I love. 